Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at the NTX F7 flight controller. It's an all-in-one flight controller. We're going to just do a quick overview, talk about some of its specs and as well as how to connect this guy up. This is an F7 flight controller. It's F7 all-in-one flight controller with an ICM gyro. Now you might say, well, what does that mean? Well, it's a sensitive gyro. So if you don't know, if you don't have much experience, um, I, I personally would recommend you stay away from the ICM gyros just yet. But if you have the experience, you're gonna have a very responsive quad depending on the overall build of your quadcopter. So this is one of the first F7 flight controllers with an VTX integrated somewhat in a way. As you can tell, it's connected via two pins and they're pretty much glued down. But it's also really nice to see that they've levitated it off the main board here, thus allowing the board to stay cool and kind of um, reduce the chance of electromagnetic interference because of these gyros are really sensitive. I mean, super sensitive. Uh, as you can tell, here's the F7 flight controller. It does have OSD. Filtration seems too minimal for my liking, especially that it's rocking an ICM gyro. I mean, I see two caps here. They're pretty big, but you know, it's still, I don't think it'll be enough. They, do, they also provide you with some kind of capacitor. It could be a Chinese branded capacitor here. Uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. And in here, there's about maybe five other small capacitors below below the VTX right here. Uh, so that's something to take note of here. Now, the ICM gyro is based for, uh, I would consider advanced users or experienced users. Uh, advanced and experienced play a big role in this because you're gonna need to play with filters and you're gonna be able to know how to tune. Because these, these gyros are very sensitive and they're very sensitive to electrical noise such as ESC noise. They're also sensitive to frames if the frame has a lot of vibrations. For example, a Jeb RC Mark II 7 inch uh, will not fly on F7 with the ICM gyro. That's, that's, I could never get it to fly. So I'm currently switching out the F7 with the ICM gyro off of that frame. So frames do matter here. Um, what else do we have? For example, if you had your wires very, I mean, with no slack, basically, for your ESCs, like your ESC power wires, and, you know, the wind was hitting it, as you can tell, it kind of moves the board somewhat, and that does, you know, translate into the gyro, and if you don't have that filtered out, if you don't get it filtered out just fine, you're also going to have problems, so uh, this is towards aim towards advanced users because if a, if a novice or a bunch of novice users went ahead and picked this up and they can never get it to fly they're just going to say it's a piece of crap board but in reality it's not there's a lot of variables that can affect this board and hopefully soon we'll see better software or better filtration or automatic filters or some dynamic filters that will help uh, dissipate most of those issues but nothing is ever perfect in these kinds of scenarios so that's something. Now, the VTX here is a, up to 600 milliwatt selectable. It takes two to six S LiPos. So this is really nice. The sport takes two to six S LiPo, which is really good to see. And uh, as you can tell here, we do have two pads, but we don't have a telemetry pad. So we have the signal pad, which is motor one, and then the ground pad for the ESC. I'd highly recommend you ground your ESCs because I've noticed a lot of um, weird noise or weird stutters when the ESCs are not grounded, believe it or not. So that's something very uh, useful and I'm, I'm starting to ground all of my ESCs now. So I'd highly recommend you ground your ESCs. All right, so let's take a look at the board now. So we're gonna see how we would connect this and how would we set this guy up. So obviously we have our battery in the back here. They do provide you with just about everything. They give you the uh, silicone wires here and these are 14 gauge wires. They give us XT60, some Chinese branded 1000 microfarad 25 volt possibly low ESR capacitor. I don't know, but I'd highly recommend uh, you pick up some Rubicons. I'll leave a link to those down below. And um, they do provide you with the dampener. So it does have rubber grommets for dampening, which is really good. And it's actually a must with such a, such a gyro here because the gyro is obviously not soft mounted. So that's something very important that they do provide you. And obviously here's the XC60 and some heat shrink. So let's put this to the side. And also they give you the antenna to IPEX port here. I wish it was MMCX, but you know, when you consider the cost here, now if this board is actually, if it turns out to be good, the cost is pretty spectacular for F7 ICM gyro and a VTX, it's 40 bucks. Every other old one flight controller costs 40 bucks, whether it's Chinese or whether it's a nice name brand. And uh, to be an F7, if you get this just right, I think you're gonna have a pretty responsive sick flying quadcopter, but that's all in theory right now. So let's go ahead and take a look how we would connect this guy up and how we would set it up here. So obviously we would want to put it into our quadcopter like so, have the battery leads in the back, and then we have motor one, motor two, 
motor three, motor four. So it's perfect beta flight orientation. We do have our USB on the left, so it's accessible, which is really nice. And we have our boot button here on the left as well. So that's good. And I believe these are the, the channel selectors. This is the power and this is the channels and uh, frequencies here for the uh, transmitter up there. So if we're gonna go ahead and connect an S bus or an I bus receiver, it doesn't really matter because it's an F7. So it does have an inbuilt inverter. So it automatically detects that and does the inversion. So what I where I would actually connect my S bus or I bus signal pad would be here on this third one. So this one would be RX2. Uh, they're stating to use RX2, but I don't know if it really matters, but we're just gonna go ahead and do it that way. So this one would be right there, this pin right here. This would be the signal for our S bus receiver. And if you wanted to go ahead and connect the five volt and ground, which is really nice, and that's why they're stating RX2, then you would have five volt and ground. So right here is where you would connect your receiver. So it's really nice. And you can totally see that on the schematic or the layout of the board. And I'll have a picture of that in the corner, hopefully. All right, so now next up, let's just say you wanted to connect your camera. Where would you connect your camera? So you wouldn't want to go right here. This would be five volt, which is the second pad right there. And then this would be video in. So video in, five volt and then ground all the way over there. This would be VBAT. So if you wanted to power your camera for some reason from the battery voltage, that's where you connect it. And this would be five volt. This is where I'd recommend you connect your camera. And uh, this is where the video input, the yellow wire from your camera go in. Obviously there's the ground right there. Well, it's not obvious, but that's the ground right here. So that's pretty simple. If you had a buzzer, you would connect it here. The buzzer positive and the buzzer minus as well is right there. Now you might say, okay, well, where's the video out? Well, don't forget, this is this has an inbuilt VTX, so it'll handle your OSD and do everything else for you. So all you really have to do is connect your battery, ESCs, a receiver, camera, and you're done here. So it's really nice. It's a really nice setup. Uh, they really simplified it, which is really good. They also do have an LED pad if you wanted to use that, and as well as a 3.3 volt for a spectrum or satellite. So the three point, this would be the five volt for your receiver. The next one over here would be a 3.3 volt, and you would connect the same way you would. So it would be 3.3 volt ground, and then you would have the RX2 would be right here. So for, let's just say spectrum IBUS. So it doesn't matter, IBUS, SBUS, uh, possibly even PPM, you can all connect right here, which is really nice. I really like that. Now the overall board design and layout, it looks pretty clean. It looks really well made, but that's all that can be said to be honest. All right guys. So yeah, like I said in the beginning, this is how it would be installed because it makes the most sense because you have the correct motor layout. Now, I think what you're going to have to do is you might have to set an offset on this board because the gyro is upside down, but I could be wrong here. So. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and check this out in a net later video when we do some kind of testing on this. We'll bash some noise into it and see if we could see anything in the in the gyros traces, which I think would be pretty interesting. I'm still working on that kind of testing, and that's why I haven't really done it for F7 flight controllers and with ICM gyros just yet. So that's why um, I'm actually I've just started the process of figuring out a way to test the ICM gyros or just the board of how well it could handle noise passing through the gyro and figure out some kind of a uh, a base model or just a base measurement that is a good measurement where we can compare everything to. So I need a couple more tests of those. I do have a couple F7 flight controllers for Maytech, uh, Hollybro, and this one as well. And I think I got some others as well coming. So we're going to see how well those are going to do with the ICM gyros. And hopefully we have a nice testing platform for that. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. Peace out, guys.